Hey y'all, what's up? It's Monday, so I'ma keep it black, but I'ma keep it brief. Today is National Crown Day, everybody. What's that? It's a day named for the Crown Act, which stands for creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. Black folks know they love an acronym. It's a law that prohibits race-based hair discrimination based on hair texture and protective styles such as braids, locks, twists, and knots. Now, show of hands for anybody who has personally been victimized by hair discrimination in the workplace or at school. Well, today and every day after we say, we're the protective style, sis. And not just women, everybody black. Because for forever, we were just out here with no backup, no support from HR or the higher ups, just having to change ourselves and appearances for the approval of the man? Well, no longer. Crown Act was first introduced in California by Senator Holly Mitchell and signed by Governor Newsom on July 3rd, 2019. This set off a chain reaction across the country, and now 23 states have passed the Crown Act. And it's really refreshing to me because you would think that's something that historically has only ever affected black people due to the unique makeup of our hair and all the fantastical things we can do with it that nobody would make a fuss about it. Cause let's walk it back a few steps. In recent years, we've heard viral stories like Faith Finities, a sixth grader who was sent home from school because of her braids. CJ Stanley, a first grader who was denied entry on the first day of school due to his locks. Andrew Johnson, a high school wrestler in New Jersey who was forced to either cut his hair or forfeit his match. Chastity Jones was asked to cut her locks for a corporate position. And when she refused, they rescinded her offer. And when she tried to take it to court in 2018, the Supreme Court refused to even consider it and thus basically granted employers permission to ban most, if not all natural and protective hairstyles. In 2021, World Aquatics, the international governing body of international water sports, rejected a swim cap designed specifically for natural hair at the Olympics because it didn't fit the natural shape of the head. And even if we didn't have these viral episodes, we know hair discrimination and tactics to avoid it to have been woven into our everyday lives for some time. Many an HBCU grad has found it necessary to cut off their locks to even enter corporate America. Hell, we can barely fit graduation caps and many of us have been told how we can or cannot wear our hair if we want to walk. And much of this hair discrimination in favor of a cleaner look does not even consider that black hair is susceptible to breakage and hair damage by the overuse of blow dryers, flat irons, and chemical relaxers, all of which we have to use excessively to keep our hair in line. Because by nature, our hair is determined to stand up. And don't get me started on how we just found out decades later that perms can cause cancer. Lord of mercy. Thus, braids, locks, twists, and knots collectively protective hairstyles are necessary for healthy black hair maintenance. Anywho, at some point, Dove, yes, the soap, said we've seen enough. Let's put some numbers behind this phenomenon. And in 2019, they presented their initial crown work place research study and oh buddy this study found that black women are made to be more aware of office grooming policies at a higher rate than white women 80 percent of the black women surveyed agreed with the statement i have to change my hair from its natural state to fit in at the office and that their hair was 3.4 times more likely to be perceived as unprofessional in 2021 the crown research study for girls found that 50 percent of black mothers whose daughters have experienced hair discrimination reported that their daughters had experienced it by the age of five and this year in 2023 the research study found that black women's hair was still 2.5 times more likely to be perceived as unprofessional which is crazy to me because we got a judge appointed to the highest court in the land with sister locks. <laughs> Kitanji, Kitanji, Kitanji. Black women with locks, natural protective styles are disproportionately sent home, fired, dismissed, and even punished at school for this. So Judge Jackson, we thank you for being you. Tanisha Meeks, thank you for eating down on Chloe and Halle Bailey's hair and adjusting their crowns to highlight the versatility and overall appeal of black hair and locks specifically. Especially after somebody tried to play you and Zendaya, talking about her hair looked like it smelled like patchouli oil and weed. Huh? And I already know what's coming. It's just hair? Why y'all can't change it? Well, because y'all dubbed our hair unruly, unkempt, uncivilized, nappy conditioned us for sick girls to engage in negative self-talk and adopt anti-black ideals when it comes to self-image y'all created intimate ties between texturism and colorism from paper bag tests to hot combs and perms and the truth of it is that all of these things problematic as they may be have been a part of our cultural processes and our journey showing that anything you can do we can do better because period but miss madam cj walker and miss annie malone we thank you for your efforts but we's free now <laughs> oh wait a minute you dropped this